It's Tuesday, and Jesus is at it again. Uh, you might imagine through the eyes of the Jewish leadership and all the people who are gathering for the Passover, that the events of Sunday and Monday probably took them by utter surprise as Jesus enters Jerusalem triumphantly with this whole crowd singing his praises and announcing him as the king. And then on Monday, he returns and he disrupts all the uh, rituals and going on at the uh, temple. And, and this is all caught them by surprise, but by Tuesday, they're ready for it. Because each day, Jesus, at the end of the day, is walking about two miles back to Bethany. Most would believe that it's in the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. And so he, he walks that two miles back to Bethany, and then he is coming back in the morning, and this time, they're ready for him. And the thrust of their traps, because they've got all kind of theological traps and legal traps set for him, um, comes down to his authority. And their primary question is, by whose authority do you do this? And they start attacking him on one issue after another. But what's interesting is Jesus has an answer for all their questions. And they're asking him either or questions, but none of his answers are either or. And he is using this opportunity of entrapment to teach and to let the people around know about a better kingdom, a better way of living, a better way of going about life that draws mankind closer together and closer to God. This in many regards was beyond their ability to imagine. But Jesus describes this in maybe the most beautiful way possible. When he teaches through one of his parables here in the temple as he's being challenged. There's a lot of pictures of God today and a lot of ways that people describe God. Some glowingly, some disparagingly. Here's how Jesus described them in this particular instance. He described a king who prepared a huge and beautiful wedding feast. And he invited all of his best friends, all the important people of the world, to come to this feast. And they all were too busy. They all had other things to do. Now in its first context, and we read that the scribes and Pharisees were irate because they understood he was talking about them. But in his first context, he's saying all the important people, God's chosen people at the time, are going to refuse and are refusing to come to my feast. You see, the picture of God here is someone who goes out of his way to provide wonderful things for his people. They were too busy making money. They were too busy lifting themselves above everyone else. You know, the whole holier than thou, I can keep the law better than you, I know more than you, all that stuff that we don't see anything about today. That's what the Pharisees and the scribes and all the people that day were doing. They didn't have time for God's feast. And so what does he do? He sends his servants out into the streets. He says, anyone's willing to come, the lowly, the downtrodden, come unto me, come to my feast. We even read that he robes them. He gives them appropriate attire. Don't worry about the clothing. I've got it for you. Come along. 
You see, Jesus is telling us what he's preparing to do. He's preparing to pay the price of having us admitted to the wedding feast. Once again, we see that the leadership is irate. But they can't do anything about it. Because everyone is hanging on Jesus' words. Or, I think more accurately, Jesus knows his time isn't here yet. Scripture tells us that Jesus is our Passover feast. It's so interesting to see that Jesus is going about teaching all these wonderful things this last week, helping those around him. But he's going headlong towards the Passover sacrifice. Not without cause, but to lift you and I up. That's the beauty of Jesus Christ.